Well, it's clearly there's a, a, a difficult kind of moment in terms of Brexit, and also, of course, there's the, the Hungarian vote taking place today where Hungary could be losing its voting rights, so there's some definite tensions, and a lot of it is related to migration policy. And he has also spoken about the importance of getting a unified, workable migration policy together. And I think in terms of resolving a lot of these tensions, and you could include Italy in that, um, that will be key going forward. And there, there, there doesn't seem to be much progress on that front. And that is, uh, I'm sure, concerning the, the senior, senior politicians in, in Europe at the moment. Derek, much of the narrative this year has been about trade and trade wars, extra tariffs, etc. In your perspective as an investor and someone who looks at these markets, do you think that that meeting between uh, Juncker and Trump staged somewhat of a turnaround in terms of expectations of where these negotiations are going, or, or detente of, of sorts? Well, it, that is one element of optimism. Well, there's a bit of hope there that there could be some kind of progress and that there isn't a major conflict between uh, essentially the, the two big areas of trade outside of China, of course. So th there is an element of optimism there. And of course, you, you just mentioned Canada, where there potentially is some shift on the dairy sector. And that could result in a, a fresh NAFTA, which would also be obviously positive as well. But you know, the big, the big issue, of course, is whether or not the Trump administration takes that step uh, against China with uh, additional imports. But given that your focus is foreign exchange, has it had any impact whatsoever, do you think, on euro and the trajectory of the currency here? Or is it more just a function of respective growth outlook? Right now, we see the US is growing with the 4%. Europe is growing, but not as fast as the US. Therefore, the love has been into the greenback. Is that as simple, simple as that? So the way it's being uh, passed on is via growth expectations rather than actual economic impacts. Well, there is a big divergence when you look at G10 FX performance versus the US dollar. The currencies that are much more global growth sensitive are by far the underperforming currencies. So Australia, New Zealand, uh, Sweden, those currencies are the worst performing currencies. When you then move into the core G10, the performance is different. And of course, you have the yen and the Swiss franc who've actually outperformed the US dollar. And then the euro's performance is only just behind. So when you look at the external positions, uh, currencies that have that kind of safe haven characteristic, those are performing a lot better. And it's really the, the growth sensitive where you get the, the, the major on the performance. So it's that, perhaps rather than simply saying, oh, interest, interest rate differentials, they're widening in favor of the US, all these currencies are going to perform poorly. It, it track track record doesn't back that. Hey everybody, it's Hadley Gamble from our new CNBC Middle East Bureau in Abu Dhabi. Thanks for stopping by. Now to watch more, you can try one of the videos that just popped up on your screen. And don't forget to subscribe.